and uh, we are looking at the third point of Christ being a mediator. The Lord Jesus in his human nature, thus united to divine, was sanctified and anointed with the Holy Spirit above measure, having in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, in whom it pleased the Father that all fullness should dwell, to the end that being holy, harmless, undefiled, full of grace and truth, he might be thoroughly furnished to execute the office of a mediator and surety, which office he took not unto himself, but was thereunto called by his father, who put all power and judgment into his hand and gave him commandment to execute the same. In other words, it says, the Lord Jesus in his human nature, thus united to the divine, he's the only God, man. He was set apart. He was made holy. He was sanctified. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed abundantly by the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 45, verse 7, and uh, if mommy can take and read it, and John chapter 3, verse 34, Yes, Mama. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. He, he was anointed more than them of the companions. He was, you know, Jeremiah was anointed in the mother's womb, but still he hadn't, he was conceived by an earthly father. But Christ was unique. He was sinless, undefiled. He was set apart by, for himself, for God. He was the man chosen of God. John chapter 3, verse 34. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son and has given all things into his hand. The Father loveth the Son. He speaks the words of God. For he himself is the word. For God giveth not the spirit with measure, by measure unto him. In other words, he was full of the Holy Spirit. And with the result that he was filled with wisdom and knowledge. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3. Colossians 2 3. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ is my wisdom. And to that I can add 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. Mama, can you read that? He's our wisdom. He's our sanctification. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. One second. Who became for us the wisdom of Christ, God. Christ Jesus became for us on our behalf, the wisdom of God. Continue on. Continue. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So he became for us wisdom of God, sanctification, righteousness and redemption. In, in other words, he is my substitute. He, the, my mediator was called and equipped to be my substitute. The Father was pleased to have all fullness indwell in him. Colossians 1.19 Colossians 1.19 For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. In him, in Christ alone, all fullness should dwell. 
he was anointed by the Spirit. Secondly, he was equipped to serve. My mediator was equipped to serve. He was not ill-equipped. He was holy. He was righteous. He was uncorrupted. My me his purpose was that the Lord Jesus Christ may be fully equipped, totally, completely, wholly equipped to perform the duties of a mediator and a guarantor. He was my guarantor. He was my mediator before God. He was fully equipped to perform that. Acts 10 verse 38. Verse, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was equipped to do the work that he was sent forth. And the true good works is done by Christ alone. Let that sink into our hearts. There is no good works that anyone can do. All the good works that people talk of from be it Ephesians, you are created unto good works. So you are thoroughly equipped to do good works. All that is in Christ alone. None of us can do any good works. The only good work that God has wrought in our hearts is to trust on Christ and to believe. That is the work of God. There are, look at during COVID times, look at the Sikhs who had langar. Have they not done better good works than Christians? Christians want to do good works and take photographs of, of all the little provisions that they give to people. They want to boast of it. And very subtly, in the name of accountability. What about the Sikhs who are doing longer? Anyone can just walk in and eat the food. Are they not doing good works? They have set up a hospital where the rich and the poor, anyone can just walk in and nothing, you need not pay for it. But Christians so boast about good works. Our, the only good work we can boast of is the good work that Christ did it. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Hebrews 12, 24. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of the table. And chapter 7, verse 22. By so much more, Jesus has become a surety for a better covenant. Jesus has become my surety for a better covenant. He is my guarantor. God looks at Jesus being my guarantor and God says, he has fully paid for you. You and I are incapable of paying any debts of us. Jesus is my mediator. Jesus is my guarantor. And how is he my guarantor? As he was holy. He was so perfectly holy that the standard of holiness was fully acceptable to God. God who gave the Ten Commandments as the standard of holiness, who could accomplish that? It was Christ and Christ alone. He loved the Lord God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind. None could ever love him as Christ loved the Father. Christ loved his neighbor 
perfectly with all his heart, with all his soul, even to this extent that he went to the cross to pay the, the price, the propitiation, the, the price that is required of God to taste hell. Which of us has ever done that for our friends? That we lay down our life to taste hell on their behalf. Christ did it. He was holy. He was perfectly harmless. What do we mean by harmless? He came not to condemn the world, but he came to redeem his own unto himself. What is that? Thirdly, he was uncorrupted. There was no corruption in him. In John, it says, he has nothing of the devil. He says, the wicked one is about to come and he has, I have nothing of his in me. My mediator was perfectly equipped to serve. To serve, to give, to serve the righteous requirement of the, of the Father. He is perfectly equipped so that what God requires of us, he was able to do it. And my mediator was full of grace and truth. Hebrews 7.26, my mediator. For such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. My mediator was my high priest. And John 1.14, he was full of grace and truth. And my mediator was called to this office to accomplish. The Lord Jesus Christ did not take up this office of mediator at his own initiative. He was called by the Father. Martin Luther says it was God's own choosing. And, the, and that man was Christ Jesus. Hebrews 5 verse 4. Four and five. And no man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Christ was chosen by the Father. Because Christ God equipped him and he is the God man. There is none mm -hmm. besides him. Who gave, God gave him all power and all judgment and commanded him to execute this office. John 5, 20, John 5, 22 and 27. Matthew 28, we know all power and all judgment is handed into the hands of his son. John 5, 22 and 27. For the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son. The father has committed all judgment to the son. And whatever the son judges, he judges so righteously, so rightly, because he has the mind of God. I and my father are one, said the son. And he knows exactly what the father would have said. He did it so perfectly. And the father approves all the judgment of the son fully. 27. 27 and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. He is 
a mediator. He is a guarantor. Let's look at the fourth one. If we can spend another 15 minutes. This office, the Lord Jesus did most willingly undertake, which that he might discharge, he was made under the law and did perfectly fulfill it, endured the most grievous torments immediately in his soul and most painful sufferings in his body and was crucified and died was buried and remained under the power of death, yet saw no corruption. On the third day, he arose from the dead, which the same body in which he suffered, with which also he ascended into heaven, and there seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession, and shall return to judge men and angels at the end of the world. The Lord Jesus fulfills the office of the mediator. How does he fulfill? He fulfills it in humiliation. He fulfills it in his exaltation. In his humiliation, the Lord Jesus willingly accepted this office of mediator. And uh, if you if you if you all are writing notes. You all can take down Psalm 40, verse 7 and 8 with Hebrews 10, verse 5 to 10, John 10, verse 18, and Philippians 2, 8. He willingly accepted this office of mediator. He knew that he is going to die. He is going to be humbled. He is going to be born of a virgin. He has to grow as a child. He knew he has to work under his imperfect father. He knew he has to obey the law of the land. He knew he will be tormented by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes. The law giver became obedient to the law. The one who gave the law on Mount Sinai where Moses was told, this is holy ground, remove your slippers, now became law abider and men mocked him. The one who was seen in the burning bush was seen as friend of sinners. The one whom Abraham bowed down and worshipped. My Lord, if you will not be angry, would you spare Sodom and Gomorrah for 50 righteous people if they, were, if they were there? Yet, when he came down, he was called. He was said that he was doing all healing, feeding, the, feeding people, healing the sick, raising the dead by the power of Bulzibub. He was humiliated. The good he did was repaid with evil. But Christ knew that he has to humble himself. If he was to be our mediator, he was to be our representative. In order to fulfill its obligation, he was brought under obedience to the law. Galatians 4.4 which he kept perfectly. Matthew 3.15 and Matthew 5.17. He kept the law so perfectly that God was so pleased with him that God could say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Christ. when he took upon himself the office of being my mediator, was humbled. We all can talk of what pride is and what humility is. We can never touch the hem of the humility of Christ. Our humility is just to, in front of others, in front of each one, how we behave. 
but the true one who is humbled is Christ alone. Though it is said of Moses, he was the most lowliest of man, yet none can compare his humility with Christ, the one who created the world, the one who spoke into existence all of creation, the one who gave life to you and me. was limited in knowledge, in space, in, by time. What humility it is that he restrict, reserved and from using all his power and authority. That is humility. When you have all power and authority with you, that you do not unleash it. You restrain yourself. All the humility that we talk of is pseudo humility. He suffered terrible anguish directly in his soul. Matthew 24, 26, 37 to 38, you know all these passages, Matthew 24. To 44, Matthew 27, 46. He had such an anguish in his soul when he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. His soul was so troubled. The disciple could see that his soul was troubled. You and I, when we are troubled, we could run to each other. We could ask each other for prayers. But look at when Jesus asked his disciples to pray for him, what were they doing? Busy sleeping. And he said, couldn't you pray for one hour? His soul was troubled. And from that, you could see that Jesus prayed for three long hours because the battle was so severe. The battle was severe. He fought the devil, he fought the world, and he fought the flesh, and he poured out everything. There was anguish in the soul. And he experienced terrible pain in his body. Matthew 26, 28, he was beaten. His flesh was stoned. And he was crucified and he died. Philippians 2.8. He went to the cross. Hebrews 12 says he joyfully endured the cross. My mediator endured all that pain, all that suffering, all that humiliation with joy for you and for me. That's our mediator. He did not boast of it, but he did it in perfect love. Who else can be my mediator if it's not Christ? He was buried and remained under the power of death, yet his body was not decomposed. Acts 2, 30, 23, 24, and 27. Acts 13, 37, and Romans 6, 9. And, and one of the Psalms, it says, he will not allow the Holy One to see corruption. What a mediator we have. What a substitute that we have. You know, just saying, I believe in Jesus and Jesus died for me is not enough. You must know his person in totality. And you must know what works he did for us. And the spirit of God will lead us to know that. Because even the devils believe and tremble 
at Christ. A person who says, I believe in Jesus is no better than a devil who says, I, the devil believing in Jesus and, his, and in his power. Secondly, he, he fulfills the office of the mediator in his exaltation. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. He rose again from the dead. Death could not keep him. In the same body that experienced suffering. John 20, 25 and 27. His body was a perfect body because it was without sin. And he rose with the same body. Your body and my body are tainted with sin. We are made from dust. He is the heavenly man, Romans 5. We are of the earth. We needed someone to be a mediator far greater than us. Who can be my perfect identity of my perfect image representing me. And this mediator was exalted. He went to the depths of hell, tasting the wrath of God. And he was exalted. He rose again the third day from the dead in the same body that he experienced suffering. In his body, he also ascended to heaven where he sits at the right hand of the Father, praying for us. Romans 8, 34, Hebrews 9, 24, and Hebrews 7, 25. This mediator has been exalted to be seated at the right hand of the Father. And at the right hand of the Father, he mediates for us. He intercedes for us. He's our advocate there when Satan accuses us of all that we do. We have a mediator, the advocate, who said it's all paid for. It's all paid for. And this mediator is exalted to the highest position. Only God the Father listens to him. All that the mediator, my mediator says, God the Father listens to him. When my mediator prays on my behalf, it's not with uncertainty. It is with perfect certainty that his prayer will be answered. Your prayer and my prayer may be answered, may not be answered. There might be a silence. Not his prayer. Because he prays according to the Father's will. What an assurance we have that Christ prayed for us. And his prayer was so answered so perfectly well that you and I are saved. He says, I don't pray for these alone, but I pray for those who are going to believe on their words. At the end of the world, he shall judge, return to judge human beings and angels. Romans 14, 9 to 10. Acts 1, 11. Acts 10, 42. Matthew 13, 40 to 42, Jude 6, 2 Peter 2, 4. He is going to judge everyone. But one thing, rest assured, my judgment has already taken place in Christ. Because Christ was my representative. Christ was my mediator. Christ was my guarantor.
Christ is my advocate. He is my high priest. He is my prophet, priest and king. Both in his humiliation and in his exaltation, he fulfilled what God required of him for being a mediator. Next week, we'll look at the fifth point, which talks of Christ's obedience for our salvation. If you say that we need to do all these things so that God will be pleased with me, you deny the very person whom God has sent to be my mediator. And that is blasphemy. That is God, that is being a God hater. When people say, oh, God is so pleased, I need to do all this so that God will be well pleased with me. You have become your own mediator. Which is blasphemy. You don't recognize the one whom God has sent. May God help us that we trust in that one and only mediator between God and man. We have no other mediator. The Roman Catholics have saints and popes as the mediators. The, all false religions have different mediators. Islam has Muhammad as the mediator. Hinduism has Ram, Shiva, Sita. And what about the so-called religious people? They have their own flesh as the mediator. The good works that they do by the flesh, they think can appease God. But for the elect, for the sheep, it is Christ alone who is, his, who is their mediator. There is none other.